fact, even though it's how most of the massive bodybuilders train for decades. Yeah, buddy. Light weight, baby. What's up, guys? I'm Josh Nate Lift Things, and I'm here to talk about frequency. How often should you train a muscle group? If you've been in the fitness space long enough, then I'm sure you've seen countless splits, all with differing amounts of frequency. Bro splits will have you hitting a muscle group once a week, for instance, having a chest day and a back day. Beginner LPs will have you doing typically full body like three times a week. Push pull leg splits or upper and lowers will often have you hitting a muscle with two times a week frequency. Other more advanced forms of splits will often have you training a muscle whenever it's not sore. For instance, let's say Monday you hit rear delts and quads and lats and biceps. Well, if the next day your rear delts aren't sore, well, you can train them again. All of these different splits are manipulating the training variable known as frequency, which is one of the three major training variables along with intensity and volume. Intensity is how close to your one rep max you were lifting. For instance, if you could bench press 100 pounds and you were doing sets with 50 pounds, you were training at 50% intensity and volume is typically measured in the amount of hard sets per week. Frequency is purely defined as the amount of times that muscle group gets directly trained, typically in a week. When I was younger, body part splits were all the rage. It's what you found in every single muscle and fitness or men's magazine. If you Google the John Cena workout, which I definitely did, that is what you were rewarded with. These days, virtually everyone does a PPL routine or some variant of it, at least for bodybuilders or people focusing on aesthetics, where you train a muscle group twice a week. Where does this idea even come from? Essentially, we know that MPS or muscle protein synthesis is elevated for about 24 to 72 hours after a workout. Muscle protein synthesis is just that. It's your body synthesizing or creating new muscle proteins or building muscle. At the 24 hour mark after exercise, MPS is quite high. And at 72 hours, it's much lower, but is still elevated. This is all just purely an estimate, by the way. Some studies show after like 36 hours, there's a massive drop off, and some show all the way up to the 72 hour mark. Here's a study changes in human muscle protein synthesis after resistance exercise. The results indicate that a single bout of heavy resistance exercise can increase biceps muscle protein synthesis for up to 24 hours post exercise. Here's another the time course for elevated muscle protein synthesis following heavy resistance exercise. Here it says that MPS increases rapidly, is more than then doubled at 24 hours and thereafter declines rapidly so that at 36 hours it has almost returned at baseline. Then another study mixed muscle protein synthesis and breakdown after resistance exercise in humans says that post-exercise it returned to resting levels by 48 hours. So imagine you're doing a push-pull legs where on Monday you did push, Tuesday you did pull, and Wednesday you did legs. Then some people would make Thursday their rest day, or some people would jump into another set of push-pull legs. So Thursday would be your second push day of the week. Well, that Thursday would be exactly 72 hours after your first push day. That means that theoretically, you would be in the perfect timing to make sure you are constantly in a positive muscle balance, meaning that muscle protein synthesis, assuming diet was correct, would always be higher than muscle protein breakdown. You train Monday, get a big boost of muscle protein synthesis, and then when it almost runs out, you train again. Sounds good, right? Well, sometimes things can make sense through a mechanical perspective, and then they don't seem to play out in the actual like human studies. This may be one of those times. So this study by Schoenfeld of the effects of resistance training frequency on measures of muscle hypertrophy, a systematic review and meta-analysis. Essentially, when comparing studies that investigated training muscle groups between one to three days per week on a volume equated basis, the current body of evidence indicates that frequencies of training twice a week promote superior hypertrophic outcomes to once a week. It can therefore be inferred that the major muscle group should be trained at least twice a week to maximize muscle growth. Whether training a muscle group three times per week is superior to twice per week remains to be determined. Now, here is the effective resistance training frequency on gains in muscular strength, a systematic review and meta-analysis. This is by Schoenfeld. We can see here from the conclusions, the results of the present systematic review and meta-analysis suggest a significant effect of Resistance training frequency is higher training frequencies are translated into greater muscular strength gains. However, these effects seem to be primarily driven by training volume because when the volume is equated, there was no significant effect of resistance training frequency on muscular strength gains. Thus, from a practical standpoint, greater training frequencies can be used for additional resistance training volume, which is then likely to result in greater muscular strength gains. However, it remains unclear whether RT frequency on its own has significant effects on strength gain. 
It seems that higher frequencies result in greater gains in muscular strength on multi-joint exercises in the upper body and in women. And finally, in contrast to older adults, young individuals seem to respond more positively to greater frequencies. So that one was on strength. Now let's talk about actual hypertrophy again by Schoenfeld. How many times per week should a muscle be trained to maximize muscle hypertrophy? A systematic review and meta-analysis of studies examining the effects of resistance training frequency. So here we can see that they use meta-regression analysis of non-volume equated studies showed a significant effect favoring higher frequencies frequencies, although the overall difference in magnitude of effect between frequencies of one and three days per week was modest. In conclusion, there is strong evidence that resistance training frequency does not significantly or meaningfully impact muscle hypertrophy when volume is equated. Thus, for a given training volume, individuals can choose a weekly frequency per muscle group based on personal preference. We have to quickly talk about equating for volume. For instance, you could do a five day a week fucking routine where every single day you are training a muscle group, but volume is going to have to be lower on those days. Think about it. If you're doing a bro split where one muscle group had one day per week, you would have time to absolutely hammer that thing. You could do 20 sets of chest on your chest day. If you were doing five days of chest and you try to do 20 sets of chest every single day, you would get way too burned out and most of it would be just super inefficient and junk volume. If you are training something more often, you have to reduce the volume done. So when volume is equated, meaning you do the same amount of volume in one chest day versus five different chest days, if volume is similar, it seems to elicit similar gains. This study here by, again, Schoenfeld, Resistance Training Frequency and Skeletal Muscle Hypertrophy, a review of available evidence. From the conclusions here, based on the results of this review, it appears that under volume equated conditions, resistance training frequency does not seem to have a pronounced effect on gains in muscle mass. But we can see from the results section, these studies provided findings that are difficult to interpret, considering that circumference is a crude measure of hypertrophy i.e. it does not allow for the differentiation between adipose tissue, intracellular fluids, and muscle mass. From this study, individual muscle hypertrophy and strength responses to high versus low resistance training frequencies. Here they specifically talk about the individual difference, which is very, very important, but importantly, individual manipulation of frequency can improve the intrasubject responsiveness to training, but the effect is limited to each individual's capacity to respond to resistance training. Finally, individual response to different frequencies and resulted TTV, and TTV is just total training volume, does not necessarily agree between muscle hypertrophy and strength gains. Before I give my conclusion or try to offer some practical applications to all of this, we have to touch on training variables once again. They are a delicate balancing act. We have to remember, training is the stimulus, and getting stronger and getting bigger is purely the adaptation. But we obviously can't train infinitely. Too much stimulus will result in actively less adaptation. We must recover in order to adapt. So if intensity can roughly be defined as percentage of one rep max lifted, heavy weight would be high intensity. If volume can roughly be defined as number of hard sets, then more reps is more volume. Can you do both high weight and high reps during the same movement? No, you cannot. As weight goes up, reps must come down. Again, if you can bench 100 pounds, you can do 50 pounds for a bunch of reps. If you instead did 90 pounds, the amount of reps you could do would be much lower. It's all being compared to 100 pounds, your one rep max. As you see, intensity and volume have this inverse relationship. As one goes up, the other must come down. But frequency is just as important, specifically when talking about recovery. You could have a frequency of seven times a week, but in doing so, Intensity and volume must be interchanging through each of those days, or they have to be low on all of the days. If the goal is maximizing muscle protein synthesis, wouldn't this be ideal? Train a muscle group every single day, just enough in order to actually get some type of stimulus. Well, no, that's not really how any of this works. Conversely, you could train a muscle group once per week and completely hammer it. But now we're talking about bro splits again, which have been deemed super inefficient by the masses, even though it's how most of the massive bodybuilders train for decades. And that's my point. Everyone seems to respond differently. Hell, even most individuals' muscle groups probably respond differently, meaning your quads probably respond a little bit differently than, say, your glutes. That's all going to depend on muscle composition and what percentage of them is made up by fast twitch versus slow twitch and everything else. I don't want to bash bro splits. I don't want to fucking love and 
preach and practice a five time a week muscle group frequency. It's too variable to say what is the best for everyone. Instead, as per usual, you should do what you enjoy. Do what fits your schedule. Do what you feel is working. And if at some point you think that that is no longer working, then change it up and stick to that new routine for a couple of months and assess your gains and recovery. Push pull legs is great. There's nothing wrong with it. I just don't want people to blatantly say that twice per week is just inherently better. Some studies say it is. Some say that it's not. At the end of the day, we all have different lifestyle factors. Some people have more intense jobs and can't get to the gym six days a week. So if someone wants to say you're training suboptimally, that's probably not the case. Do whatever you want to do. Just do it with the knowledge that there probably is no right answer here. Once a week to every single day, there's probably some perfect range in there, but is impossible to predict on an individual basis. And guys, that is the video. If you like the style of content, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe button, leave a comment, or respond to every single one of them, and it really helps out the channel, and make sure to share to a buddy. If you really like the style of content, you can follow all of these socials. They will be linked in the description below. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and have a great day.